Welcome to the Kennedy Report. I'm Kennedy Hall. Is playing video games a sin? Is it sinful to play video games? So this right here is my cell phone. As you can see, I don't know if I turn off the sound, so hopefully it doesn't call. <laughs> this is my actual cell phone. It's a Nokia something $70 on Amazon. Now, why did I get this phone? Well, I got this phone because like a lot of people, I have a social media account. I have a Twitter account. You can follow me at Kennedy Hall. Now that Twitter account for me is very useful. It actually um, provides me with professional opportunities. It has been a reason why I've been able to learn to make a living as a journalist, as an author, and as a broadcaster. It's been very helpful. Uh, but there's a line that gets crossed when something that is useful, either as a pastime, as a proper form of recreation, or as a professional tool, becomes a vice. And there was a time when I had an iPhone. Uh, like many people, it was an iPhone 7. I think I still have it somewhere. I use it as an iPod every once in a while. Um, they don't make MP3 players as effectively as they used to, as far as I can tell. But anyway, um, I got rid of that as my main device because I was spending a lot of time on it. It was easy for me to justify. I'm scrolling because maybe I'll make a connection. Uh, I'll talk to so-and-so, and so-and-so -so will repost my thing, and then maybe somebody will buy my book. I mean, you can follow the logic as much as you'd like. But I realized that was nonsense. There was no reason why if I could spend eight hours a day sitting at my desk doing professional work, if I couldn't get done what I needed to do for professional reasons during that time, then that was my fault. That had nothing to do with me justifying a vice. So I got rid of it. Now, I don't have a video game habit. But there are many people out there who do. And not only do they have social media, but they also sit in front of a computer at work all day. They also have a smartphone. And then on top of that, they spend hours a week, maybe even a night, playing video games. Now, it's not intrinsically evil to play a video game. It's not. You can obviously sit down and play an NFL or NHL or NBA or something game with some buddies, and it's just like playing cards. You're just doing something for fun. It's a way of having a little competition. You have a blast. There's nothing intrinsically evil about that. You could also sit down and you could play a game uh, like a military game. There's nothing wrong. I mean, little boys run around and, and well, my kids, they play Narnia. So they're running around pretending they're fighting the White Witch and her army and things like that. And they're pretending to be in battles and stuff. Video games are kind of like that. You're pretending to do something. So are they intrinsically evil? Well, after uh, I say this here, we'll continue with that thought. Uh, if you like the video, please press the like button and subscribe to the channel. Visit the thekennedyreport.com to see how you can help us keep growing. Your support is making all this possible. Thank you very much. But are they intrinsically evil? Well, no. Video games are not intrinsically evil. It is not a sin to go sit down in front of an Xbox, assuming the content itself isn't sinful, and there is some that is. But assuming you're playing a game that is morally neutral or something to that effect, of course it's not officially a sin. But at a certain point in your life, especially when you have kids, especially when you're a grown man, you have duties. Primarily, you have a duty to get yourself and your family to heaven. So let's just think about that for a second. Before we even get into the uh, idea of how much time you spend on video games, let's think about do you even have the time to spend it on them? So you work minimum eight hours a day, and that doesn't include your commute. So let's just say nine to 10 of your hours per day are spent in some sort of professional capacity, whether it's travel or actually being on the job. So 40 to 50 hours a week, you are spending there doing something professional. Maybe you work from home, everyone is different, but this is just the basics. If you're at your job and you work in an office, you are spending 60 to 70% of that time because you do have breaks and you call people and you, you chat with other people. I get that. But you're spending 60%, 60 to 70% of that time looking at a computer screen. You're looking at a screen right now. Thank you for joining us. Then you have television shows. Then you have movies. You have some social media. I'm assuming... Uh, everything that we're talking about here, we're obviously assuming that we're going to choose moral options. So you're not watching 
dirty film or something like that, fine. We're talking about, okay, there's a legitimate way you could enjoy all these things and they're not actually sinful. And then on top of that, you have this idea that you're going to add playing video games. We've established that you spend 60, 70, 80 hours a week in front of screens. How many hours a week do you spend awake? Let's say you sleep seven hours a night. So 17 hours a day, you're awake. Is that the right math? I hope so. You're spending 10 to 12, 13 hours a day with a screen in front of your face in some capacity, and that's not including video game usage. And you want to add video games on top of that? Now, I'm not saying you should have that much. I'm just saying that's the baseline. That's the stuff that involves everybody else. That's your professional stuff. That's watching television with your wife and your family. That's engaging in stuff you're on your phone because you know you are. That's the stuff that you're doing when you're out and about, when you're social, when you're with other people. And then on top of that, you want to add this playing video games. So let's just think of this primary responsibility to get yourself and your family to heaven. When are you going to read spiritually? When are you going to meditate? When are you going to pray the rosary? I'm not talking about just rattling off the beads. You know, I finished the rosary. I'm talking about when are you going to kneel down, meditate on the mysteries of the rosary? When are you going to get the daily mass, if you can? When are you going to read the Bible? When are you going to unwind? All of those activities, work, television, social media, um, all of those things involve stimulus. When are you going to just do nothing? Do you really think that in this day and age where they're throwing advertisements and pornography and vice at you everywhere you look, you cannot walk down the street without being encountered by some billboard or shop window or whatever, where they're trying to sell you something where if you engage in that behavior, you'll be damned to hell for all eternity if you don't make it to confession in time. When you were a kid, if you're my age, I'm 34 years old. I never once saw my parents play video games. They weren't really a thing. What kind of example are we setting for our children? Yeah, dad, he works on the computer all day. Yeah, dad's on his phone all the time. Yeah, dad and mom watch a show after supper before we go to bed. And yeah, dad drinks Mountain Dew and he plays video games till one in the morning. How long, if that's how you live, is it going to be before you slip up in other areas of virtue? If you've got this addictive stimulus coming into your mind all the time, you won't be able to stand the quiet. That's exactly what Satan wants. He wants your mind chaotic. He wants your mind fractured. And he wants you focused on anything except for God. Maybe you've read the book, The Soul of the Apostolate. It's a famous spiritual work. And I'm reading through it right now. And I'm by no means a spiritual master. One of the things that struck out at me, stuck out to me, is even when this book was being written 100-ish or more years ago, at that time, the author, this is before even anyone had a radio in their household, if I'm not mistaken, when it was written. They were talking about how people were always trying to occupy their minds with something. Because they couldn't stand the thought of being alone with their thoughts and alone with their conscience and alone with God. We live in a society where it's almost impossible to be away from stimulus. It just is. I mean, if you're one of the few people out there that has a certain type of job where you are working with the land and you're not, you know, on the phone all the time and things, fine. But the vast majority of people, that's not the case. The funny thing is when you find these people who do have jobs or or vocations where they don't have a ton of electronic stimulus, they don't want to go for the electronic stimulus when they're in their free time. It's almost like jarring to the peace that they have. So the question isn't really, you know, what's the line when it comes to sin with video games? Yeah, obviously if you play some video game that's super sinful because of the content, well, that's a no-brainer. But we don't even need to get to that point. The real question is, Can we even 
consider approaching that singular and primary most important goal of getting ourselves and our children to heaven? Can we even think that that's possible if on top of everything else that we do, we sit down and we, 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 we slump in front of a screen that makes our neurons fire while we watch some electronic pastime take place while we press some buttons? It's not intrinsically evil to play video games. I'm not judging anyone who does. But I'm just saying, personally, I don't think there is any possible way that a Christian man, especially in this day and age, with everything being thrown at us, can even think that he's going to stand before Jesus Christ and say, yeah, that 17 hours a week I spent between the ages of 25 and 46, that was well spent staring at my screen. I don't think it's going to go over well. Some people are probably going to be mad at this. That's usually a sign if you're mad about something, that's usually a sign that you got to throw that thing out. So is it a sin to play video games? Well, it's not intrinsically evil. But I think in today's age, it's foolish to think that we could get into that without eventually falling into sin. And therein lies a real sinful danger. If you've liked this video, Press the like button, subscribe to the channel, visit the links in the description to help us keep growing. Thank you for your support. It's been wonderful. Thank you to all the patrons. You can sign up by clicking the link in the description. Visit thekennedyreport.com and throw out your video games. You'll probably have a better life if you do. This has been The Kennedy Report, and until next time, God bless.